And now to an incredible story of survival. A well-respected surgeon kayaking in a remote South American river drowns. 15 minutes underwater after, her, after a horrific accident pins her to the bottom of a river. No air and no way out. Amazingly, Dr. Mary Neal did manage to make it out alive after she was rescued. But she says she had a glimpse of the afterlife that she calls one of the greatest gifts she's ever received while she was struggling under that water. Author of the book, To Heaven and Back, Dr. Mary Neal joins me now. She's an orthopedic spinal surgeon. Dr. Neal, thank you so much for being here. I, I want to start with this. Prior to this incident, were you a religious person? I would say I was pretty typical in that I was raised in a church on Sunday mornings, and I did take my own children to Sunday school. But I think it was typical that I never incorporated spirituality into my daily life. And did, so did you have, a, did you have a thought about an afterlife or a heaven prior to this, one way or the other? I'm not sure I really spent the time to think about it. I had four young children and a full-time job and a husband, and life gets in the way of thinking about spiritual mm -hmm. things usually. So you're out in this horrific accident. You find yourself under a waterfall uh, kayaking, and you get It pinned. wasn't horrific. It was wonderful. Right, right, <laughs> right, right. It starts off kind of <laughs> horrific, though. Uh, and... and Take us through it. What, what happens to you as you find yourself submerged underwater? Well, I was submerged and the force of the water had me absolutely pinned to the front deck of the boat. And so I was not able to push myself out of the boat or pull the spray skirt off and exit the boat. And I tried a number of times before it became clear that I wasn't going to be able to exit the boat on my own. And I was far enough away from the shore of the river that I didn't think anyone was going to be pulling me out. And at that time, I gave my life over to God and truly and sincerely asked that God's will be done. And at that moment, everything changed. I was very calm and peaceful and felt great. And I had this very physical sense of being held and comforted and reassured that everything would be fine. My husband and my children would be fine, regardless of whether I lived or died. This is while you're under the water with no air, with you, you can't breathe, you're, you're completely submerged. You, do you believe you were dying? Yes. I continued to do self-assessment exams and I knew I couldn't breathe. But for me, it was a very seamless transition. I had never wanted to drown. I had always been afraid of drowning, even though I'm a water person. And for me, one of the remarkable things is that I never felt panic. I never felt afraid. I was really very calm and continually reassured, even though I knew that I had no air and I knew that I was dying. You say you, f you felt you, you, ro you rose up and out of the river and when my soul broke through the surface of the water I encountered a group of 15 or 20 souls who greeted me with the most overwhelming joy I have ever experienced. Tell us about that. It was fantastic. These were people, spirits, souls, I'm not quite sure what to call them. All the words sound a little goofy. But they embraced me and were so filled with love and joy and they were people that I had known for an eternity and they had known me for an eternity and we were so happy to see each other and they were clearly there to help me go down this path and protect me and it was wonderful they were exploding with God's love and grace and they took me down this path that was so beautiful that I have really no words to describe it and time and space had a different sense and so I could rejoice with them simultaneously I could look back at the riverbank and see my body being pulled to the shore and seeing CPR being started and I looked back on my body and sort of felt fondly toward it and thought, gee, you, you served me well. And it was then that I
truly realized that I must actually be dead. Wow. Do you, do you as a doctor, have a medical explanation for any of that? Where medicine ends, God begins. That's the real answer. Because this was not a dream or a hallucination, and it wasn't the result of a dying brain. This was more real than anything we experience here on Earth. And, and now, I, now, having been through it, do you have any fear of your own death? Oh, absolutely not. I wouldn't hasten it, but I am looking forward to going back when it's the right time. Wow. I have no fear. Dr. Mary Neal, it's an incredible story, and we're so grateful that you came on to share it with us. I do want to ask you before I let you go quickly. You say one of the, one of the questions that you feel you can answer in the book is why do, why do bad things happen to good people? Can you leave us with your thoughts on that? I would tell you that there's no such thing as something that's bad. As one very quick example, you called this a horrific accident. I look at it with incredible gratitude and joy. And we may not understand how a, quote, bad thing transitions into a beautiful thing. But I think when you truly have trust that that beauty exists, we can look, and it's unfortunately always retrospectively, but we can almost always look back at something and see all of the incredibly positive and beautiful things that have come out of something that would originally be called tragic. Yeah. Even and going back as far as the death of Christ. I mean, we celebrate we gotta, it. We've got to leave it at that. But Dr. Neil, thank you so much. The book is called To Heaven and Back, and we'll be right back.